What up players, it's Wallbots today in this mode. Today we're going to get started on this Chaos Warrior of Corn. Usually I go up to, to the watches, but I decided to just do base coats today. And we'll come back in part two to do the washes. So here are the colors you're gonna need. Corn Red of Corns. Balthazar Gold. Lead Belcher. Abaddon Black. Mechanicus Standard Gray, Rack Art Flesh, and where is my there we go. Steel Legion Drab? And finally, Dryad Bark. So, I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think. We'll be coming back for part two with shades and highlights. All right, let's get started painting this Warrior of Chaos in a Nurgle, or Nurgle, corn theme. Sorry, I say Nurgle because I've been fighting off a cold lately and Grandpa Nurgle always coming at me. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give him a base coat of corn red. Some of you who haven't seen my older Chaos videos might be wondering how I got this arm. And oh, also let me say right off the bat, I spray primed my model with Duplicolor matte gray primer. So um, a lot of people think that I'm painting s like bare plastic and I am not. So I'll just get over, get the uh, questions that I get asked the most out of the way. So people who are new subscribers, might not have seen my older videos, will um, kind of get those answered. They won't have to ask about it in the comments and if you have, if you typed it and you entered the comment then you can just go ahead and delete it. Uh, Duplicolor color matte primer, great primer for plastic and metal and I use it a lot. Sometimes I don't have it like here at my at the lady boss's place I don't have it. It's at my other house. So uh, any models that I prime here will either be black or white. Uh, those are the only two primers I brought with me. but. Um, yeah, I, I, I prefer the gray. It's it's easier for me to, to see things off of. I, I, I also do spray prime in, in black and white. <clears throat> and it's not that I, I think it's bad. I just have a better experience with priming in gray. Um, what else do I usually get asked a lot of? The, this thing that I'm holding is a cork. It's a piece of cork that you get from a hobby, or arts and crafts store, sorry, not a hobby store, arts and crafts store, uh, just ask them for, where's your, where's your cork? And they'll tell you where to go. You can also get there, while you're there, poster tack or blue tack, and that's what I use to attach it. All right, so all that's out of the way. The hand is from the bits package. That is the um, halberd bits for Warhammer Fantasy 1000 for Warriors of Chaos. I don't know if they still sell it anymore or not. That's what that is. While we're waiting for the red to dry, we're gonna take Steel Legion Drab and we're gonna paint that on the cloak. Yeah, and this one's been taking me a while. I've been meaning to do this video for a long time, but um, I've painted a couple of test models and I don't really care for them, so that's why we're going to this one. I finally uh, kind of settled on a color scheme that I like that kind of kind of mixes a bunch of separate things. All right, some people say that they like to paint their Warriors of Chaos with their shields unglued to their body, and who? That's uh, totally fine too. I, I would not mind doing that. I just so happened that these are some of the first Warriors models that I built and when I built them, um, I'm, I just attached the shield. So um, you can leave the shield off, paint it separately and then put it on. I know that as a completionist um, painter, that is something that I would do as well if I had thought of it. And so I can certainly appreciate people who, who think to do that ahead of time. 
love these models. They're, they're getting pretty old, but I mean, they're so big and beefy when you compare them to other models in the range. They are on a 25 millimeter base, if you uh, collect Warhammer Fantasy and don't know. Let me check my, uh, my notes here. Okay, so the trim, we are going to use a mixture, a one-to-one -one mixture of Abaddon Black and Mechanicus Standard Gray. I've got a wet palette here that I'm gonna use to mix the colors. This is because black would be too dark of a color to start with for the trim and Mechanicus Standard Gray as it is, is just a little bit too light. There's my Mechanicus Standard Gray. And here is my black. So you have a very, this kind of reminds me of the old Adeptus Battle Gray, which I think is a great color. All the old foundation paints are really, really good. It's just a little bit darker than my primer, so um, if you're using a black primer or a white primer, it will definitely show up more than it does on my model. See that most of the colors are still drying, so we'll let them dry and then we'll paint around them. Warriors of Chaos are um, such a powerhouse of an army in Warhammer Fantasy. And um, I really, really like painting them. You can see if, if you watched my old uh, Zinch Warrior of Chaos painting guide, it is very against the norm. It's, it's not what you would think of how to paint a Zinch warrior. It has like black armor with very bright runes on it. It's just very out there. Um, and that's because there's so much with any army, there's so much you can do creatively to make your model separate and individual and unique. And um, I like that. I like not painting the standard what people expect. Uh, for in this case, though, I am going with the red armor for corn. Uh, but we are going to be doing something a little bit, a little bit creative and different. So I hope you, I hope you stick with me. There's not really much more I can do because the corn red is still drying. It's the thing about these new paints; they take longer to dry than the older paints. So um, we'll jump ahead to another step and then um, come back to that later. The wood of his halberd. We are going to paint that in. Mornfang brown. We can get to that because there's no real areas that are still drying around it. It's not connected to anything, so there we go. You could also, I Mornfang brown is a personal choice. You can also do if you want. You can paint the wood in black. You can also do it in. Uh, you could also, if you want, you could trade the browns. So, like, you could do the cape in Mornfang brown and this put Steel Legion drab on the halberd if you want. That's another option. You could do it in um, a dark brown, like Dryad bark, which we're going to use in a second for the shoes and do Mornfang brown for the shoes instead. The thing about all of my color schemes and any color scheme really is all the colors are really interchangeable. Uh, it's really up to you. There's there's no one thing that says you have to do it this way. Even Games Workshop, as much as they love to stick to their standard color schemes, they, they do like to encourage creativity in painters, which I appreciate. All right, moving on. Dryad Bark. This is gonna be for any of the leather pieces, like belts gloves, and uh, boots. Hopefully by now any of your 
red in the base coat has worn off, or dried, dried up, not worn off. Oh, what a terrible paint range it would be if the paint just wears off after a while. The reason I like this dark brown of dryad bark for the shoes rather than something a little bit lighter is because the red, the red is so vibrant and it's going to end up being so bright once we're done with it that I wanted a really dark contrasting color for the boots. See my my guy's um cloak still needs to. That's another thing, uh, don't forget to shake your paint pots. Sometimes I forget, and that's why my paint ends up being super runny. Paint running like forest. Some people, or I, I have gotten messages in the past saying, dude, your light is really bright. Um, why do you keep it so close to your model? And it's because for these tutorials, I found that it helps to dry the, the paint on the models a little bit faster, having my light like right up here, just a couple inches away. Um, some people prefer to have their light be a little bit farther away from their models. Certainly an option. Hard part, or not a hard part, but a piece of the model that you're gonna find potentially tricky is the cape and the trim that's right at the front of the armor. So you wanna make sure that you go into that with a steady hand, good brush control. Back to the dryad bark now, a dark brown for the gloves. Now the left glove is kind of tricky because it's it's hidden behind that shield, right? So, um, and you might not even have a shield if if you're running your corn warriors with two hand weapons. <clears throat> uh, but if you do, and you're a doofus like me, and you paint your your shield on, or you you glue your shield on before you start painting, then what I do is I hold my model at an angle and I try to go as close to the shield as I can. It's easier to repaint the shield than it is to repaint uh, any pieces of armor that you, that you mess up. So here's what our guy looks like so far. Not very impressive, he's still in the opening stages. Um, let's paint on his belt. The 
belt might take the longest to dry because it is uh, the most, it's got the, the most different uh, heights to it on the model. So when you're slapping paint on, also because it's so centrally located on the model, it, when you're slapping on that first coat of corn red, it's very easy to let a lot of paint get stuck over here on the belt area. So you might want to wait until that dries a little bit more before you paint it. I'm just going to briefly paint it on right now here to show you like a little start of it. All my brushes, all my tips are kind of really weird to me. All right, what else can we do? We are going to take... Let's get working on the silver, huh? We're gonna take some lead belcher and we're gonna paint the loincloth and the halberd head. Of course, if you're using a different weapon, it's whatever weapon part, whatever part of your weapon is silver. That's what color you paint the silver with, lead belcher. So like I said, the, the red could still be drying. The belcher might not get good coverage. We're gonna let this guy dry a little bit more. And um, since I don't wanna watch, I, I don't want you to have to sit and watch all the painting that I've already done, I'm going to let it dry. Then I'm gonna go back over with all the paint colors that I've said previously. So Steel Legion Drab for the capes. I'm just gonna do like a second coat of all this. Morn Fang Brown for the wood of whatever hand weapons you're using. Lead belcher for the silver bits. Dryad bark for the leather, like the boots, the gloves, and the belt. Abaddon black and Mechanicus standard gray. Mix them together and that will be the trim of your cloak. Or your, yeah. So, uh, we're gonna let this guy dry, come back. I'm gonna paint on a second coat of all of those. And then I'll do a little wrap up to show you what he looks like after. See you soon. All right, there's a couple more steps that we're going to do before we finish this first part of the video. And the first thing is we're gonna paint the horns. Now, I never liked painting um, the horns onto my Chaos Warriors. I always thought that the bone color kind of offsets the rest of them, but I'm gonna do it just so that you can see there's nothing to be afraid of, especially with these ridged horns that I've uh, I never I never liked as a painter. So I'm taking Rackarth flesh here and I'm going to just paint the whole thing with it. I um I've I prefer when the the horns are painted in, in metallic colors like gold or silver. I feel like when they do that, it evokes that feeling of them being, you know, really mighty warriors without the, it's, it seems like high fantasy to me that they find these, they all have to find these creatures and take their horns and put them on their helmets and they all look exactly the same. Um, having, having it, like, uh, what's the word, forged onto their helmets by their tribe's blacksmith. Seems like they would, would be more easy to do, but whatever. Horns and skulls, horns, skulls, and spiky bits. Okay, if you have any other bone things, like uh, skulls or... There's this little tooth thing hanging from this guy's knee pad, I guess. Then that, you also paint in, in Rackarth flesh. 
the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on the trim to this guy's armor and weapons. You're gonna be doing that with Balthazar Gold. And I tell all the kids these days, you kids don't know how lucky you are to have Balthazar Gold, because when I was a boy, in order to paint a gold color onto a model like this, you would first have to coat it in a foundation paint, which used to be cow thin brown. And if you didn't, you just painted the gold color shining gold on at the time, uh, it would be so watery and it would streak so much that it, you might as well just not paint anything on, or you would have to do like three or four coats. So it would always extend the time that you would take to do your base coats because you would need to put the base coat of Calvin Brown on, or the foundation coat, and then you'd have to do the, the gold. And it always, it always took much longer than you would want it to. I remember the first time I painted Balthazar gold on onto a model, I was just blown away that you wouldn't ever need to do that step again. Good times, good times. Eight-pointed star. There we go. So any other bits and pieces on the armor, like I'm gonna paint this. There's a skull right here in the middle of his chest plate. You can kind of see, so I'm gonna paint that in gold too. Uh, the rivets I'm actually gonna do in silver. So going on to the halberd now. Any decorations on your weapons, like arrows, skulls, anything like that, that would be painted in the Balthazar gold. And there's a little ring on this guy's shield that I'm gonna do in silver as well. So let's take our, let's let that dry for a bit. Um, I am going to take now Chaos Black, or if you have Abaddon Black, and we're gonna paint the binding on this guy's weapon. The reason I'm going with black is because we can highlight that up with a different color. And um, it's because most of our, the brown colors and shades that are in the range we're already using elsewhere, like the dark brown for the leather, the lighter brown for the, uh, the cape here, and we're using this reddish brown for, for the wood of the staff. So you want something that will look different and also pick up the light just a little bit. Or maybe not pick up the light so much as um, just show differently in the light, is what I meant to say. So, Lead Belcher is going to be for the rivets and any other extraneous metal pieces. I forgot to do the bottom here of the halberd, so that will be in Lead Belcher. Corn Warriors of Chaos with halberd and shield. It used to be these guys were the... Um, were the standard unit you would take. Give them the mark of corn, so paint them up like a corn guy, like this one, and then uh, give them a halberd and a shield. Not sure if they still are the super good unit that they used to be. Uh, if any of you play Warriors of Chaos, I'd like, I'd be interested in hearing some feedback on that, if they are or not. I didn't really. I remember when the new the new rule book came out, and they came out with all the all the new stuff, like the, the Hell Striders, the uh, Mutalith, that giant, all the giant monster stuff. I didn't really care for all of that. Like to me, the the main core of an Warriors of Chaos army was always like the the infantry, the cavalry, which got a little bit of a nerf, but they still look super awesome. Alright, 
So the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm taking this off of a piece of artwork that I saw, and um, it shows a lot of inlaid gold um, designs and stuff onto the chaos armor. So I'm going to take my Balthazar gold now, and I'm going to try to replicate that. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take our Balthazar gold, and we're going to take a nice sharply pointed brush, and the goal is you want to just paint the trim of all of your armor. So all of your armor plates, that's why we did the rivets in silver, so we can show differentiation. Now in this piece of artwork that I found, there are all these real nice intricate runes and inlaid designs and stuff and you don't have to do that. I think it's going to be enough when you put these guys on the table that they have this slight shine to them. If you do want to go that extra step though, um, that would be that would be cool. And some, some designs that I could think off the top of my head that would work if you want to do, you know, full out out embroidery on your armor and stuff would be curves, swirls, the the eight-pointed star, things that chaos would things would be very proud of. collar here. In fact, why don't we paint Balthazar gold on this whole collar piece? On both sides, this high neck collar piece, I think that'll look pretty, pretty awesome. That does look cool. You could also paint the whole um, one of the plates above his knee pad, or even his knee pad, all in all in gold. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all in gold the plate right under his shoulder pad. Not really going to be able to see that until you get the highlight on it later. You could do something like, if you remember my old How to Paint a Zinch Warrior of Chaos. I did some kind of design like this, but I did it with runes on the actual armor itself. So if you're looking to replicate that with gold on the red, then you can do that. Okay. And then we're also going to rim, or edge the rim, rather, of this disc on the front of his armor. Paint this shoulder pad here. And last but not least, we are going to do the whole edge of the shield. I decided to save the shield for last because it would need the most concentration. 
and also because it's the most prominent so um, it's like you practice on all the other pieces you get your hand steady to what it needs to be doing and then this is where you kind of showcase This is just the, the first of a couple of gold colors that we're going to paint onto our warrior. So if you're not seeing it, if it's not showing up, then don't, don't worry, don't keep adding gold. You don't want to get it on too thick. If you put too much paint on, it's harder to, to blend it into the, the color that's coming after it. There you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Now that I did that around the shield I'm going to add a little bit of horn red to clean up the edges of the shield And that's it for the base coats. So um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let all this dry, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do some, some shades in just a little while. Thanks for watching, everybody.